All right, we are live. It is Thursday, ACX Thursday. I'm telling you, I love my Duke shirt, but I've got to get like an ACX shirt. So I had the idea of getting an ACX shirt for Thursdays, a Fiverr shirt for Fridays, you know, Marketing Mondays, all these things we're doing. And uh, I need to get shirts, but I don't, they, they don't sell them. So I think I would have to illegally make them. <laughs> but, anyways, my name is Anthony Pika, and this is A VO's Journey. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. Do you like how I added that little drum roll right there? That was for you, Angela. All right. So. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's good to be here. It is January 30th, right? January 30th. That's correct. We have one more day in January 2020. Unbelievable. Like crazy, crazy, crazy. So uh, f how fitting to talk about ACX. Um, you know, today uh, we do a question and answer session uh, with some thoughts that I have about what I think would help you grow your business on ACX. So, um, you know, this, this idea has been really just pounding in my mind uh, and it, this phrase, right? What is the measure of your resolve? I said this a few uh, videos ago and it really means everything to me. Right, the measure of your resolve. How much fight do you have? Right, how much are you going to work towards getting what you want? You know, are you going to play by rules that someone else tells you to play by, or are you going to, you know, push the limits of what's possible and make it happen for yourself? To me, that's the measure of your resolve. How hard are you going to go for it? And we're talking about ACX, you know, we could just dive into auditioning. I mean, I, I really, you know, it's, it's amazing, you know, being involved with so many wonderful voice actors and people in the business, I get to see so many different sides of, you know, what makes people successful, what people are doing to be successful, and what people aren't doing to be successful. And I'm telling you, the number one thing is your resolve. What is that fire that burns you, that makes you go forward when everything is telling you it's not working? It sucks. Uh, this, you know, I'm, I'm no good. I need better equipment. I need more, you know, training. I need this. I need that. All of these things come at us all the time. And worse, when we've got things to do that we don't even want to do, that we're doing poorly, clients are breathing down our necks, all of this stuff, this weight gets on us and it makes us feel like we're, you know, two, two, two inches tall. But again, I ask you, what is the measure of your resolve? How bad do you want it? You know, I was talking to my wife earlier this morning. And I was mentioning to her because it was, you know, she leaves at about 6, 630 in the morning and we were up and getting some coffee. And uh, last night I stayed up till uh, it was old school for me last night. I stayed up till about 230 or three, just working on the business, auditioning, getting things done, uh, working on uh, different things. And um, I told her, I said, you know, I don't know what like. I wonder, you know, how, if I could do this again the way I did before where I worked, you know, every single night for almost two years, you know, staying up till two or three in the morning. And, uh, you know, she told she said to me, she said, you know, um, I remember that time she told me you were just so determined that it didn't even phase you. And if you think about all of that. And if you, you stop and think about it for a second, I mean, our determination is incredible, right? Our ability to push pain, to push worry, to push fear aside and keep going forward can be incredible, right? But it also can stop us dead in the tracks. So... I just wanted to put that out there. I was dying to say this. This is ACX Thursday. I know it's not 
you know, Wisdom Wednesday or anything like that. But, you know, I wanted to talk to you about my feelings about that. And moving into auditioning, right, for ACX, there is so much work for you there. For a beginner, someone who hasn't even started, to someone who is a professional, like a seasoned professional who's trying to grow their portfolio. There's so much work on ACX. You can get it. All you got to do is get your butt there, audition the crap out of it. I know I'm a little fired up right now because I've been like, I've been dying to come on today and talk to you guys about this. Right. Because there are moments in our business that lag. Right. You might be going through one of them right now where you're like, daggone it. I can't get any business. I have, nothing's happening for me. It's the beginning of the year. Everything's slow. But then I go and I see, you know, such and such is, is waking up. I just saw um, Susan. That's funny. People calling me. I have Susan. Like, I, I'm not going to say I said her name, Susan. But I was just saying Susan McGirl, which I love. I, I, I threw your name out there, Susan, posted this thing about waking up and she had like six hundred dollars plus of work. Why are all these other people being so successful and I'm not? Ah! All right. Angelo is another one who's posting all these wonderful things. All right. I posted too this morning. But still, all these people, and you might be that person who's like, God, I hate these people. I'm not getting any work. Do you let that stop you or do you let that fire you up inside to push you forward to do even more work? I don't know what the answer is for you. I hope it's the latter. I hope it fires you up inside to see what's possible. But there does come a time where you have to shut it off. You've got to turn away from all of the stuff. I almost said crap because it's not crap. But you've got to turn away from all of the stuff and the noise. And you have got to just go for it. You got to dive in. You got to audition, audition, audition. You got to make sample after sample after sample. You got to put it out there and keep putting it out there and keep putting it out there and don't stop until you're successful. That is the measure of your resolve. That's what makes you successful. All right. That was, you know, I, I don't know where that came from. That was like my Winston Churchill moment, although I was probably a little even more dynamic than he was just then. <laughs> But anyways, uh, yeah, I, I, I love seeing people who take the initiative and just go all out and use resources, learn, educate themselves. But in the end, they hold themselves accountable because they know that they are responsible for their success or their failure. And that hopefully drives you. I know we're talking about ACX today, and hopefully this whole little spiel uh, fires you up to get some auditioning going on with ACX. When I first started on ACX, it was a big thing for me to start to um, you know, collect data. I don't know why. It's funny. I'm not necessarily a math person. You know what I mean? That's my wife. I've always been more of a creative person, but there is a part of me that does love math and numbers and data. And I love to collect data. So when I was just starting on ACX, I wanted to start seeing like how many auditions would I need to do in order to get the work I wanted to get. Could I reverse engineer an actual process to success? That's what I wanted to find out. And as I went along, I actually did. I engineered a process, at least for me, that I knew if I did X amount of auditions, I worked X amount of hours, I could bring in X amount of work. That was what I, I that, that's what I focused on. I did it. I made it happen for me. All right. And that's what I do, like in my ACX course and stuff. And when I, the people I coach, you know, those things, I mean, we talk about those things. But more importantly, I want you to know that you can be successful on ACX and any other platform. But since we're talking about ACX, the way you're successful is you don't stop auditioning. You don't stop. You audition every second. It's great to go onto Facebook and post. I'm on Facebook often. Right. <laughs> we have a wonderful group. OK, it's good to go and, and, and you've got to learn and take your courses. you got to work with your coach. But when it comes down to it, you have got to audition. You've got to put out samples. You've got to put out emails. you got to put out whatever you need to put out to get work. There can't be any excuses. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something that's happened that was been happening to me. I've just been um, 
because of the wonderful thing and because all of you are amazing and I love you to death, but it's the, the brand is growing, which is wonderful. I'm super excited about. But since it's growing, I'm getting more and more emails. I get more and more messages on a daily basis. And I love it. I love it. I, I don't want it to stop. But what I'm noticing is, is that it takes up a lot of time. So because it takes up that time, I struggle to get other things done in that focus and concentration, right? I don't know if you know what I mean, but you know those moments where we're like super focused and we're in it and we seem to get all oh, this stuff is flying and we're getting it done and we're like, this is great. Work is coming in. We're finishing it. We're doing all this wonderful stuff. And then there's those moments where it's like nothing is happening. It's dragging along and it's painful. And we're even wondering if we're cut out for this. It's like our voiceover business is bipolar, right? All right? It's, it is the way it is. But you have got to push through those moments. You've got to audition and audition again. And I hope I'm going to say how many times I can say audition. Audition, audition, audition for ACX because we're talking about ACX, and that's how you get the majority of the work on ACX. Can you get a lot of work by putting up samples? Absolutely. But you then need to figure out how many samples do you need to put up? How many samples do you need to put up a week to get the books you want? How many do you put up a month? What do you need to rotate? How many are there? I want you to stop leaving your future to chance. You determine what your future is. You can make it work. You figure it out. Don't let other people's whims or the the wind blow you wherever it goes you figure it out you take control you make the decisions and you will find out amazingly that when you take the helm you actually can steer the car you can steer your destiny but so many of us, I think, have been conditioned to not steer the car, to you know, let employers or let the world or let the news or let whatever else, right? Starting back from when we were in school, you got to listen to your teacher. You got to stay in line. You got to do this. You got to do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. Everything has been conditioned to us that as adults, we do the same thing to our children because that's what we know. But, but we're conditioned to do it, and we can't let go. Everything has to be in a nice little neat package, or it's wrong. We have to get out of that package. You have to take what you have, and you've got to make it the best thing that you can. And you've got to package it in any way you want. And push, and push, and push, and push. Don't stop. I like, you're probably like, good God, this guy's on some sort of crazy drugs today. Um, let me take a breath. I might breath, uh, breath. I might have a heart attack here. Uh, I just, I, I really feel passionate about, about it. And I also feel passionate about inspiration because sometimes I feel like we're lacking inspiration in our lives. And it's easy for, for us voice actors, I think, because we're, you know, by ourselves all day, <laughs> you know, I'm here with you now, but I'm really looking at a, a, a camera, but I'm imagining I'm looking at all of you. All right. And it can be defeating. But the best way to turn that fear, those feelings of distress, of, of not succeeding into unbridled success is through massive, ridiculously insane action. And you know when you do it, you feel better. Like you feel better when you take a bunch of action. When you audition like crazy, you feel better. And you know what's funny? It's like when you do these things, I'm telling you, the universe steps aside and it like gives you, you know, what you want. It's like, man, she's like, I, I can't stand in her way. She knows what she wants and she's going to get it. I might as well just help her get it. Perfect example. Have you ever gone out somewhere and someone's trying to do something, right? And people help them do it because they're so determined to do it. Like, you know what I mean? It's like open a door or pick up something or we see something, we try to help them. It's like, oh, that's nice. You know, we're helping people. But the reality is 
right? Is that we saw something that needed to happen. A person was trying to do it. So the world and us help them succeed. Per, you, you know what I'm talking about. When people are winning, all right, we go along and we want them to win too and we help them because they are so stinking determined that nothing is going to stop them that we're like, hey, nothing's going to stop them. Let's hop on the train. Let's help them. Let's help them. You can be that too, but you have to get that train started. No one can start it for you. I love the I love the story that Will Smith uh, says about um, <laughs> about going out to dinner. He said, "Before uh, I was well known or rich or famous, uh, you know, and I went out to dinner." He said, "No one ever would offer to pay for my dinner." He says, "Now that I'm you know really rich and famous, and I don't need anybody, you know, I could pay for anyone's dinner. People offer to pay for my dinner all the time, <laughs> and I love that." The reason why I love to hear that because it is a reminder to me constantly that you are the only one that can steer your destiny. No one else can. But everyone will help you when you start rolling. But it's like everybody's waiting to see if you're going to do it. They're waiting to see who's going to rise to the top. Who's going to stick it out. Who's going to quit or who's going to... Who's going to fight the fight in the trenches day after day after day after day? Who's going to do it? And if they do it, that's pretty cool. I could, I could jump on the train with them because they inspire me because I want to be like that. You can be that. It starts, I know all of that, it starts with an audition. It starts with one thing. Everybody, I've... Uh, like I said, works with a lot of people now, and all of you are incredibly talented. You're incredibly gifted. You have such amazing abilities. It's unreal. What separates you is not your talent. It's how bad you want it. I've always um wanted to be proof to people that anything was possible. It's what I've always wanted to be in my life. I could never find that until I found this business. And you know what I realized? It was more that I had to prove to myself, all right, that anything was possible so that I could prove to other people that anything was possible. And I still fight that battle every single day. It's never going to go away. You're never going to wake up one day and be like, I no longer have to push the limits. Because if you do that, that little voice in your head will creep in. That little thing will come to you and start to nag at you. Say, no, you're not really that good. No, you're not. Uh, people don't really hire you. They just hire you because you don't charge as much as everybody else. They just hire you because there was no one else around. You're not really talented. You really shouldn't be doing this business. It creeps in. And the only way to fight that is through action, is through to stand up and do something. Even if you suck. And you know what? I want to say something, too, because I, I had um, I had a, a person who contacted me. I did a podcast and uh, I had did a podcast about doing an audiobook and mastering it and editing it. And I had said there it was of poor quality and um, that it was an indication that there is a lot of um, poor performing people on Fiverr. And then a person contact me and this person was like 100 percent positive that it was their book <clears throat> and that they were happy that I had done the book and that I had helped the author because they were struggling and things happened to their computer and stuff. And I wasn't even quite sure that it was a person. But you know what I realized? And they told me that they actually did record it on their phone. That takes balls. Like, that needs to be praised, not shunned by me. I mean, who the hell am I to do that? That's freaking awesome to do something like that 
and to have the guts to go for it, even when you don't have anything. I saw another post on the Facebook group where someone was saying how they were in, you know, a, a different country and, you know, they, they, they didn't have a job and they, they had been let go and they didn't have any money, but they knew they wanted this and they didn't have, they didn't have a darn thing, but they were going to do it. That's the resolve that we need, all of us. And you know what? When you get all this stuff like I have right now, it's so easy to not have it anymore. Because you're like, eh, I made it. Whee! That's bull. It's bull. I haven't made it. I need to fight just as hard as everybody else. And so do you. Don't ever forget that. Because once we forget it, we're through. I love those other things where you hear people are like, you know when a CEO or you know when a company is about to fail when the CEO goes out and buys like a new Porsche. <laughs> or they go out and buy like really expensive things, right? Because that means they're being complacent. I'm not saying we shouldn't enjoy and party hard with the work that we've done, but we better continue to work stinking hard. And all those people, that, those, those, that, that, that person who contacted me, I am inspired by you and by what you have done to do something without anything, and you actually got paid to do it, that is impressive. So do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you, might, you might have turned me off by now and been like, you know, this guy, I can't listen to him real for all this time. I don't even know. Has it been like, guys, I've been yelling at you for 20 minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't need to yell at you all. It's not, I'm not mad or anything. There's like nobody on Instagram. Instagram's like shutting me down. There's like nobody on Instagram. Uh, we have one person. Thank you so much for being, <laughs> for sticking around on Instagram. Um, okay, so let's go and see who all is here. This is supposed to be about um, all of us, you know, getting together and doing, um, you know, a, a question and answer session about AC eggs. Uh, but somehow it got turned into all kinds of other stuff. So let, let's go ahead and, and start. We've got people from Twitter, people from Facebook, from YouTube. We've got a person, <laughs> one person from Instagram. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. We've got Angela on Facebook. We've got David on YouTube. We've got Lazarus on Facebook. Brad on YouTube. What's up, Brad? We got Nick. Nick? We got, uh, let's see, David said the month flew by. It did. All right, we got Dwight. What's up, man? Happy Thursday, buddy. Um, let's see. We've got Donna. We've got Richard. What's up, man? We got Samir. Hey, buddy. Uh, let's see. Donna, I am a big. I am the biggest problem in my way. I'm going to change that. We are. We all are. We, I mean, we're we're in a constant fight with uh, our alternate personality, right? I think there is is multiple people inside of us. Now, I'm not talking about schizophrenia, but I think schizophrenia, honestly, is probably just people's inability to stop those other personalities from taking over. But we let those personalities inside us nag at us, right? The personality of doubt or fear, okay? But then there is the personality of excitement and ambition and drive, all of these different things. And each one of them have their own unique, you know, um, characteristics, uh, Dwight, I once had a coach tell me that the greatest blessing that one can have as a voice actor actor is the insecurities that we have because it allows you to continue to strive for the perfect, never being able to achieve it. It's the and, and to me it's the realization. It's the realization that to me it's the realization that you know we're here, hopefully, to make this world a better place and to help other people. Uh, Samir, preach. <laughs> Thanks. Grind and don't quit. Earl Hall. Uh, Donna, that was awesome. Everything you were saying is true. Thank you, Donna. Phil, you and Will Stoff are right on with being persistent. Thank you, Phil. Flip, hey, Anthony. What's up, Flip? Richard, good motivation info. Yep, that plus the IRS <laughs> pissed off white. Wife maxes our credit cards, little access, little access cash, and more. I'm either really stupid or really determined because I'm still here doing it. Richard, man, you are what you want to be. 
And I, I have followed you for a while now, and you are determined, brother. Very determined. So good job. Lola, joining late. That's all right, Lola. You missed the party. Uh, Brad, lead measures. Amen. Phil, when you're done talking. Uh, yes. I'm going to put some samples up by ACX. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Lola. I, I need to shut up. Um, you were so kind to be our biggest cheerleader like this, Anthony. Thank you for that. I needed to hear this today. Thank you, Simone. Brad, push it good. <laughs> Push it real good. Dun, 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 You know you want to dun, 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 dun. Everybody's doing it. We all should do it together and film ourselves and turn that in somewhere. I don't know where we would send it, but uh, it should be like a TikTok or something. That would be fun. Uh, let's see. I had to do 40 auditions before getting my first audiobook on ACX. I've now completed 85 titles. I also have three books waiting to get started. Heck yeah, Tom. That's awesome. That's awesome. Again, what is the measure of your resolve? I keep banging the table. That's probably why Instagram left, because every time I bang it, the, the phone goes all wacky. Uh, let's see. Um, contempt, contempt tech. Uh, I, I probably said that wrong. Contempt, con, yeah, contempt. Uh, greetings and good day. <laughs> Spend more time trying to figure out your name. It's that eight, man. Gets me every time. Lola, love the inspiration. Have you thought about doing a TED Talk? <laughs> Thank you, Lola. Um... 80% of success is simply showing up. That is the truth. That is the truth. Phil, I got two books out. By the way, if you have questions <laughs> that, for ACX, go ahead and post them. <laughs> I know I, I, I you know, was just hounding at you. But if you got any questions about anything around ACX, go ahead and post it now. I won't preach as much anymore. I'm done for the day. Uh, I got two books out of the first seven auditions. That's awesome. And haven't had an offer since. But admit, I have to do what Anthony says and keep doing it and not giving up. Right, Phil. I mean, the reality is, is that how many, like, that's the thing. How many auditions would you do to have everything you ever wanted? I love this question. Let me, let me say it for everybody. How many auditions would you do to have everything you ever wanted? Can you even put a number on it? How many would you do? Or would you just keep auditioning and auditioning and auditioning and auditioning? The action will cause the reaction. But we have to start the action ourselves. So keep going. The weird net, even and all... Samir, it hurts so good. <laughs> yeah. Motivational amigo. Uh, Marcus, it's been awesome. So something's going on. I'm not sure. There's like it's showing that something is is streaming twice. So I don't know why. Because everybody like there's a couple people who their responses are like two or three responses. So I don't know what that is about. But anyways. Uh, hey, anyone who left because of what you're saying just can't handle the truth. <laughs> wow. Or they don't want to hear me yell. Uh, Anthony, I respect the hell out of your passion. Thanks, Lee. David, uh, cheers, coach. Love out. Don't mind the blood from my ears. <laughs> Marcus, some people need a kick in the butt. Uh, what's up, Brad? <laughs> Brad, what are you doing? Flip, standing applause. Thank you. Thank you from all of us who need that motivation. You bet, man. Phil, it's fine, Anthony. Some of us need a kick in the butt. I love rants. Keep it going. <laughs> Brad Storm, no day is the same. Brian, thanks for yelling at me. I need to hear that. Uh, that's why thanks. Yeah, no, you guys are thanking me, and then be like, I'm never turning back in. I never turning the channel back to that guy. Uh, see, now people are coming back on on Instagram because I stopped yelling. Uh, let's see, Brad. Yeah, man, sending out emails while listening to this. Nice, Brad. Uh, well said. You're obviously had your coffee today. <laughs> yeah. You know what? This is another thing. I stayed up until like three in the morning. And, and uh, Lupin, you know, my wife told me, too, she was like, you know, you do better work <laughs> at two or three in the morning. And she's probably true because she's like the edge is off. And, you know, you know, like, have you ever done where you stayed up late and you're able to focus a little bit more? Maybe because I do have like ADHD or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, I get distracted easy sometimes. I think we all do. Right. We're like working and all of a sudden, like something pops up on Facebook. We're like, ooh, <laughs> it's like who's message who's posted on Facebook? Right. You know, we do. We all do it. 
Okay, so I think, you know, sometimes to get past that helps out too. focus, focus, focus. Uh, let's see. All right. How soon should we send messages to offer authors after we have sent in auditions? Okay. Good question, Steve. Uh, so when you send in your audition right away, of course, you should send a message with the audition. Keep your message short and sweet. If you have some comment or anything about the book, I prefer to keep it just short and sweet. Like, you know, uh, hello, you know, thank you for this opportunity. I've included, uh, you know, a two minute read for your consideration. Have a wonderful week or have a great Monday or have a good weekend. Uh, sincerely, you know, Anthony, that, that's all like I say, I, I don't like to, you know, bog them down because a lot of these authors have like, you know, 30, 40, 50 auditions to listen to and don't need to read through all that. But you need to put something I would follow up. Right. I would follow up, you know, three, two, three days afterwards. If you haven't heard anything, just as a follow up and say, hey, you know, uh, I just wanted to follow up and see if you needed anything else from me to help with your decision. I'm sure you're bogged down with auditions. I just wanted to let you know I really appreciate the opportunity. OK, I mean, it, two to three days, I would send it out again. And if, you know, they might send you back something, they may not. But, yeah, it does. I did it today. I was um, I auditioned uh, for something and I uh, sent, you know, just a reminder. It was like a private audition on Voice Realm. And I just sent a, a message saying, hey, thank you again. Just checking back in. If you need anything, let me know. I, I appreciate the opportunity. You know what I mean? You just reach out to people. And I can tell you, I can tell you that I believe I've gotten more work from customer service than necessarily the quality of my voice. And this goes back to the thing. Oh, gosh, I'm going to start preaching again. This goes back to the thing about how talented you all are and all of us are. Sure, some people might have magical promo voices or some people might have that magical, you know, they every time they talk, you're just like, ah, right? Fine. But we all have our own talents and abilities. And I've worked with some incredibly talented people that are way more talented than me. But, I, you know, but the reality is, is it's your drive, it's your passion, and also your customer service. How do you make people feel when you work with them? I had a live directed session this morning, and it was so great to work with these people, to laugh and joke with them. They were a, a, a company in Austria, and it was a lot of fun. And, you know, it, it was just a blast. And then, you know, we, we finished out, sent the files. They're very happy, you know, the, the all the nine, the you know, and all the good reviews and all the stuff. But it was... It was great to be a part of something where I can, you know, make people laugh, make people feel comfortable, have fun. That is what people remember, right? That's why I coach a lot of people to make sure when you put out content or you put out stuff like on profiles, you make it sound like you want to work with people, not that you don't want to work with them. You know, I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't do this. Don't do that. I <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Because then people are like, do you actually want to work with me? Or do you just want to tell me what I can't do? I see that a lot. I don't even know how I got onto that again. Uh, see, I'm getting distracted. Uh, do you remember how many auditions you had to do on ACX before you got your first gig? Actually, Lola, I do not. But I do know that my number was 10. Meaning that for every 10 auditions I did, I knew that I would get an offer one or two offers. So that's what that number turned into me. I can't honestly remember. I remember the first book I did. It was like a sports nutrition book, but I don't remember how many auditions I did. I can tell you though, it was within a week, it was within a week or two of me starting my business that I got my first book. So I don't know how many I did at the time to get that. Um, so, you know, yeah, good question though, good question. Um, but it turned out to be 10. That was what I came up with. All right. Uh, oh, I, I think I missed something. Uh, let's see. Talon, I, um, sorry, you guys, things have gone quickly here on the, okay. Talon says, I want to do ACX, but I'm worried about time. Are there a lot of small books available to read in ACX? 
and what it's scheduling like on ACX. So, Talon, yes, that's actually what I started doing on ACX for that very reason because my schedule was so hectic and I only had late nights to work on stuff. I tried to pick smaller books, books that were under three hours. Actually, prefer preferably they were under an hour for me. I was looking for books that were like 30 or 40 minutes long because I thought that I could – actually, um, you know, I could actually do more, you know, more books and it wouldn't be as such an issue as losing money. Do you know what I mean? Like if I did a 30 minute book, you know, I may not make very money. Like if it's a royalty share, but then I'm only out, you know, an hour or so, however long it took me to do the book. Right. As opposed if I did a 10 hour book, I would be out so long. And especially if it was royalty share, because when you're starting out, you know, when I started out, I sucked. I didn't know what I was doing. I would, this is the book I'm re- I, I didn't know what I was doing, right? But I was determined as hell to make it work. I had this freaking ridiculous, like, drive to make it work. So I accepted what I did, but I at least looked at it from the standpoint of I wanted to do that because scheduling-wise, I figured that if I could pump out two books a week, right, then I could, within a year or two, have a, a decent enough size portfolio that eventually these books would, even if, even if every book only sold one book a week, if I had a, th- I'm not kidding, if I had a thousand books, two thousand books, don't think small, think big. You don't have to think small, think huge. Why not? Why can't you have a, th- a thousand audiobooks that you've done in a year? Why not? Who says you can't? You determine how you do it and what you do and how to make it work. You do, you make it happen. So I figured if I could do that and then I could make, even if I sold a book per, you know, one book per month per these books, if I had 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 audio books, right, I would never have to work again a day in my life. I did pretty good. I didn't get to that. <laughs> but, you know, I did really well. And, you know, I get a check every month and deposit it directly into my bank account. I love it. OK, but, 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 you know, that's just royalties. You can do all kinds of other things on ACX, of course. OK, but, you know, I think choosing small books is a great idea. Now, I can tell you other people might not and they might say something to you and that's OK. They can have their opinion. And you know what? Part of their opinion is right in the sense that you got to understand what you decide to do. I actually, you know what? I would I would say use a pseudonym if you want to be a famous audiobook narrator and you want people to look at your portfolio and then, you know, pay you to, you know, be on um, you know, interviews and stuff cuz you're doing the next uh, Tom Grisham on, on book. And if you want to do that, that's awesome. You can do it. You just need to you need to make sure then it comes it does it does matter the books that you choose. I, I'm not going to say it doesn't. But I didn't care about that. I didn't want that. I just wanted to, to have a successful business with revenue coming in. And this was a, the way that I could do it now. Uh, la, 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 la. Do you know the land? Okay, so. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, um, Marcus says, do you know the length at, at, that ACX will let titles sit before pulling them? Have some auditions that have been idle for six months. Um, you mean like on the? Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I don't know how long they sit on there before they pull them, and you know, so if, clearly it's not six months where they would have pulled them by now. But then you know, you, and that is a challenge. You just got to note it and move on, and just realize that that's not a book that you know is going to get you any work. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's see. Um, Lola, do you remember how many audi- – oh, I'm sorry. I, I skipped ahead to that one, right? Tony, do you do – great name, Tony. Do you do anything special to care for your health or of your voice, green tea with honey, etc.? I drink coffee. And, yeah, and diet soda. I mean, I'm straight up serious. Yeah, I drink some water occasionally. Uh, when I first started, I had wa- I had water. I had I had lozenges. I searched high and low for special uh, special lozenges that 
that would make my voice sound all beautiful. And then you know what I realized? People didn't want my voice to sound beautiful. They wanted it to sound real. So I stopped doing all that stuff. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this guy credit. I'm going to give Bill DeWeese credit here for one day I heard I, I saw a video of him years ago, right, when I was starting out, saying that he was an oddity because he drank coffee. You know, he sat down when he narrated his stuff. He didn't stand up, you know, and he was plenty successful. And I was like, you know, again, who makes these rules that you can't be like the way you want to be? Now, you could have people that say, yes, you know, the more coffee and the more other things that you drink will cause, you know, clicks, will cause your voice maybe to go out. You know, the funny thing is, is like last night I had uh, to redo, I, I was doing a character voice for, I do um, video, I do um, app, app games, you know those app games that that uh, are like the, um, uh, you win, you win, um, uh, they're like Casino Royale games, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, they have all the people yelling and stuff. So I do a bunch of those. Apparently I can yell in character voices pretty well. So anyways, but it makes my voice very tired and grovelly. And you know what I found? People love that from me. People love me and my voice when it sounds like that. You know, and uh, I've talked enough, as you can tell, that you do build up a an immunity, I think, after a period of time. A lot of audiobooks helps. Your voice will get tired. If you are doing a like a sprint, I'll call it, or a marathon with your voice, like a long audiobook, definitely drink water. And there are times when I need water, absolutely, but I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, I got <laughs> my Diet Pepsi, I drink coffee. I can't lie to you and say, you know, I, I do all this extra stuff because I don't. But that's just me. That doesn't mean you shouldn't, okay? Uh, but again, that's just me. I was real honest with you there. Somebody's going to be like, oh, gosh, that guy is an idiot. Okay, um, I'll talk about myself. Do you ever, okay, uh, got me cracking up today. That's good. <laughs> what about my question I posted up there? Donna, what question? Did I miss it? Did I say it, Donna? Oh, no, Donna. Post, repost your question, Donna. All right, Mr. Ed, thanks for these ACX Thursday sessions. They really help those who don't know. <laughs> I felt like I spent most of it yelling. Talon, thanks for the info. You have to do all of your own editing, right? I do all of my own editing, yes. I did look in for a period of time of working with someone else when I had, because uh, there was a period of time where I had like eight, nine books going at once um and i was like man this is too crazy i just uh i i just could because the because of the so because of the business decision i made to do shorter books books under three hours right the cost ratio of what i was trying to make based on what I would end up paying someone was not there. Now, if I was doing books that were paying me more, then absolutely I would have worked with someone else just to lighten the load. But since I was banking on lower paying books but making a higher return because of the volume, I was focused on volume, right? Yes, I'm on quality, but it was, it was the volume. That's why I wanted to do shorter books then I, I couldn't pay someone else up front when a lot of the money that I was expecting was going to be down the road, right? So I had to devise a way to, you know, an editing process that m helped me move very quickly. And that's how I came up with getting everything done through the read as opposed to going back and doing it after. So all of my processes, all of my re-recordings, everything is done through a series of checks and stuff that I have that I go through. So basically I'll go through a section, right? I will, if I mess up, I will record right then and there, do a quick check to make sure my words are good, and then I go on to the next one. And I do all of this up front. I end up, it takes me, it usually takes me a little bit longer, of course, than it would if I read all the way through. However, at the end, I do not then need to read through the whole book. I mean, I don't need to listen back through the whole thing, which saves me half of the time or even more because, you know, that's the point. That's, the, that's what takes up most of our time. So I do everything on the front end, fix everything, make sure all the words are correct, 
on the front end. And then, of course, I have a process like my declicker and all the stuff because I have Isotope and I set RX-7, all the different things, plus my settings in Adobe Audition to where it goes very quickly. It's just a few buttons that I push. Bam, I'm done when I'm done recording and it goes off. I don't go back and change anything because I do it all in the front end. So I came up with all this stuff in order to pump out books. No one taught me this stuff. I just came up with it on my own to make it happen out of necessity. Uh, let's see. And I didn't even know if that was anything that anybody else was doing because I never, I didn't see it anywhere and I didn't search it out because I was just like, I have to figure out this, you know, this thing because I'm, I'm pumping them out. They're, they're working and I want to pump out more, but there's only one of me. So it's like, you know. <laughs> Uh, la, 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 la. Donna, here's my question. Should our samples for ACX be just books or can they be all the others we made samples of? So Donna, I'm going to go ahead and say that in this particular case, I would recommend that you do try to stick with books. I'm not saying that e-learning is not a bad thing because the reality is a lot of, you know, nonfiction type books are set up very similar to e-learning but you know if you're doing fiction stuff or you're you know i you kind of want to do a book okay but you know like i said if you have a longer form narration that's fine but commercials are set up a lot differently than books and you know but in the end you you be the judge and i'd say e-learning is not a bad thing like if you do a lot of e-learning that's pretty good as well um you know so yeah, I, I but I would try to stick with books because you know people are are you could pretty much tell if you're doing a book or uh, something else. I mean, it's, it's pretty evident, um, as it should be. Uh, Lazarus, what is the formula to use for choosing royalty share over straight PFH? All right, so simple formula, Lazarus. It's it's simple, but it you know you got to you got to work on finding it. So I choose three hours or less. I try to make sure that uh, every book that I choose is under, you know, well, ideally under, you know, 20,000 or less on the sales rank, right? Because one would be the highest selling and then, you know, millions and stuff is bad. Uh, so, you know, 10, you know, 20,000 or less and at least a few verified purchased reviews that's what i did in order to choose the audiobooks that i did or the books that i decided to audition for for royalty share because it there's so many that when you go on there that you see that someone just posts and it's brand new there's no ranking there's no sales there's nothing and they want to put out an audiobook to get it all out at the same time you know what i mean it's all all gravy the problem is, is that you have no idea whether that book is going to sell. Now, if a book is like 30 minutes, I, you know, I'm more willing to take a chance on it because it's not going to take me a great deal of time. And then I have to look at my schedule and say my schedule is like this. Do I have time to do it? Do I not have time to do it? If you have a lot of time and you're doing nothing, then just do the book, right? You're not doing anything. Don't stand on a, you know, a on a mountain where there's no, you know, there's nothing around you. You're just standing there for no reason. But I tried then to though, make sure that it's under an hour. Okay. Cause anything more than that to me was too big of a chance because I could be doing other books that were less and at least pumping out volume. All right. Uh, let's see, Tom, I find my voice is richer and sounds better at the end of the day as opposed to the morning. <laughs> right. Uh, and it depends on what you're doing, right? What voiceovers you're doing. Uh, let's see. Graphics Gramp. Oh, I like that. Graphics Gramp. Nice name. I'm doing my fourth audiobook. I find that little 10 minute breaks every now and then help a lot. Oh, I like that. So, yeah. Um, so, something that I do is uh, depending on how I'm feeling a day, because let's be honest, right? We don't always feel. Uh, right at that moment, like we are invincible audiobook narrators. Sometimes we do not feel like narrating. Sometimes we do not feel like being in a booth for four hours, right? To get 30 minutes, it feels like, right? We don't feel like that all the time. So, uh, one thing that I do, just like uh, Graphics Graham said, <laughs> I love that name, uh, I actually will choose, and depends on the day I'm having, whether it's a page or a chapter. Right. I will actually stop, leave my booth, walk around, take a sip of a drink, 
go back in and start again. Uh, Scott Brick, uh, which is a, a very famous narrator, um, he said one time that after every single page of narration, he stops, takes a second, takes a drink of water, and then continues again. All right. And that's to keep him being able to narrate for long periods of time and, you know, allow a stopping point, maybe to reset of your brain. All right, you guys, I think we got to end this thing here soon because we're getting like it's almost 150 here. Uh, let's see. We got a couple more. Zach says, I actually find carbonated water helps clean my mouth and helps with clicks. Nice, though. You might think it would be the opposite. And, and that's what I found. I've tried every single remedy that I've heard people talking about. And there are some of them that are the more popular ones that I'm like, this doesn't work at all. And nobody seems to talk about that. You know what I mean? Like use lemons or lemon water. That doesn't work for me. That makes it way worse <laughs> for me. So like I like Ixnay on the lemon water, a. Eh? Uh, but some people it works very well. Okay. Um, I do know like honey is kind of like magical for me and that's like a magical thing, but, uh, I don't do honey a lot. I don't do honey pretty much at all. Uh, unless, okay. The honey tea thing, if my voice, if I'm losing my voice, then I will probably do something like that, but then I'll drink coffee. <laughs> it's awful. I know, but it works for me. Uh, okay. One more question. Let's see. Lee says, are audiobooks a good way to get into the character work? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Just remember, guys, if you're going to do character work for in audiobooks, like fiction audiobooks, what I like to do, here's a little tip, is I like to keep a separate file of each voice that you create labeled with the name of the character for your reference. Because I've done some books where there's 30, 40, 50 characters. I know a guy... Um, I think it's Rich uh, uh, Matt or Richard. Uh, he goes by Richard, but it's Matt as well. Uh, he did. A, he was talking about he did a book like a couple hundred characters. I mean, it was insane. I remember him going through that whole thing. And, you know, to keep all of those straight can be a challenge. So a tip that I do is whenever I have a large book like that, I just create separate files with the voices that I've created for each one so that they don't get mixed up. So that's a little tip. But, yeah, it's a great way to do it. Absolutely. I have fun with those, too. You know, you have fun with them. But there's also a happy medium, right? Because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you have to – you got to know the context of the book, right? If the book – like, a perfect example, guys try – guys when they have to play uh, women and women when they have to play men, okay, you've got to really – uh, step back for a second and look at everything and say, okay, is this book a comedy? Is it a serious book, right? Is it is it like a mystery? Is it a farce or is it more realistic? Because all of that will determine where you go with your characters, right? How far do you make caricatures, right? Or do you play it just a little bit? You know, like if it's not a farce and it's a real and it's a mystery and stuff, you know, it should be, you know, like if you're a man playing a woman, right? Women, you know, can speak a little bit more, you know, breathier, right? Don't, you don't, don't, you could change your pitch a teeny bit, but don't do, oh, I'm a girl. Don't do that stuff. <laughs> that's just, that's just silly, right? You, you don't need to change that. As more opposed, people understand it's a female talking if you do a little, a little change, Right. Maybe just a little bit different, like use something else in your voice instead of always like in the pitch. Same thing with women. You know, you don't need to drop your voice to do a male voice. You don't need to drop that pitch. All right. Men have a, a little bit more, you know, heavier type tones on the on the the downbeats and things. Right. Men speak a lot more confidently and they're not. <laughs> Right. Men are not, but they try to pretend they are. <laughs> right. That's that's men. Right. We try to pretend we know everything and we clearly have no clue. So you can emulate that as a woman being a male character without having to drop your voice. OK. All right. I hope that helps. Uh, at that point, won't more than 10 or so characters start to sound the same? I don't know. It depends on how many. Well, no, you got to come up with that many. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be able to make little changes in which case, right? The changes that they, they need to be made by different, like placing the words in different parts of your mouth, right? Different, like in the back of your throat, breathier, 
you know, more, you know, gravelly, you know, start to come up with um, different adjectives. I love the adjectives game. We'll get it. Maybe we'll get into that next time about how to like chew, like make characters. That would be a good one. All right. Every time I see PFH, I'm unsure how to calculate that. Did we do? I swear we had that. Was that you that somebody else asked that question yesterday? I thought, or maybe last time. Well, anyways, per finished hour, according to ACX, is 9,300 words, okay? And the industry standard, if you are going to do just the recording and not edit it beyond your words, you know, but not do any other editing and stuff, it's usually between 250 to 350. And if you are going to edit it and master it and turn in like fully finished files, it's more between like 300 to $400 per finished hour. Okay, that's like the industry standard. And honestly, people are, are you know, there's people who um, on ACX, you know, it goes from zero to 50, 50 to 100, 100 to 200, I believe, and then 200 to 400, 400 to 1,000. Then there's royalty share, right, which is based on you get, uh, you share 50% of the royalties that you get after Amazon takes their cut, which is 60%, which means you get 20% because it's you you and the author share 40% and you split that in half so you get 20% per audiobook sale or royalty share plus, which is you get royalty and you also can get paid up front a little bit. I always try to take some money up front, pay half up front, half upon receipt, okay, so that you don't get, you know, do all this work and then just get slammed and, and, and you they don't want it, you know, or something like that. Because um, they can't upload the book you do unless you and, 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 and they've approved it. So they can't do that. But, you know, it would be really crappy to have to do all that work and then you don't get paid. All right, you guys, I think we should call. It's, it's almost 2 o'clock. We've been doing this one a long time. So, hey, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Man, what a great episode. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, it was amazing. We are almost, I think we're four away from 800 uh, subscribers on YouTube. Please go ahead and share uh, share this. Uh, it, 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 it was a, a lot of fun and you guys didn't leave. So that was good in the beginning. And uh, please like, 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 retweet. Uh, you know, and do whatever you do, and I appreciate it very much. Oh, and the conversational course, I always remember at the end, the conversational tone course is available. I sent it out to the email list. I don't know if you're on, if you're on the email list, you might have gotten it. If not, you know what I mean? It is available on aviosjourney.com. I'm really excited about this course. Uh, in the live session this morning, I mean, that's again what I heard. You know, we want a conversational pacing and tone. I mean, again, you know, it's just, it's so funny to me that I hear it all the time. That's what clients want. And uh, that course is uh, uh, doing really well. It's already selling, so I'm very excited, and, and it's helping people. So check it out if you're interested. And it's very affordable, which is nice because, you know, um, that's important for us working voice actors. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Take it easy. We'll see you tomorrow for Five or Friday, and maybe I won't preach as much and answer more questions. All right. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Goodbye.